Hello and welcome to a new video. It's nice to get away from the computer every now and again and do the unthinkable, get some fresh air. In this video I'm going to be scanning some mushrooms and showing you my techniques for both scanning and repairing my scans. Then I'll take the mushrooms and put them in my autumn scene in Unreal Engine and talk you through that as well. Also I'll be aiming to share these scans on my sketch fire when they're ready, so please download them and if you use them let me know. Now a disclaimer, I live in the city and some of these mushrooms don't show up that often. Sometimes people kick them out of the ground or eat deers eat them. So usually I pick the ones that have either been half eaten or are already uprooted or decayed and maybe eat one or two. I avoid picking in bulk and aim to return them once scanned so they can carry on taking their place in nature. I'm going to demonstrate quick photogrammetry techniques that with the right hardware and software will give you decent results quickly and with nice high resolution textures. Many people talk about Gaussian splats and nerfs these days, but I firmly believe photogrammetry is still king for all this kind of work on smaller objects. So my setup for photogrammetry is relatively common, a Sony A7R4 and an AR400 style ring light with a Godox trigger. I didn't use cross polarization for any of these scans, but in hindsight I probably should have for the fly garrick red mushrooms, as they're quite shiny and fresh. I have a Bluetooth turntable that rotates the mushroom, and despite having backdrop holders, prefer to drape black material over an old computer chair to keep the laziness real like my previous videos. All the indoor scans are between 36 to 40 photos in one pass and the outdoor ones a maximum of 80 in two passes. Most of the processing was done in reality capture and with my camera, an RTX 4080 GPU takes around 30 minutes and costs $130 to $150 per scan. Now shooting in the void techniques and more images may give better results and cause less repairs in ZBrush, but would cost more to process due to the larger number of images and would take longer to photograph. So there is a trade off here and as I'm not scanning for prototyping, a lack of accuracy here is not the end of the world. In some cases I removed the background and coloured it black for fuss free alignment in Photoshop. I understand this could be batch script or done in Lightroom, but I can do 36 images in around 10 minutes if needed, and it wasn't needed in most cases. I usually use reality capture in normal settings, then use filtering to remove some of the excess geometry. Then I would build a 4 to 8K texture and export into ZBrush for editing. In the example of this baby parasol mushroom, the tip was slightly missing detail due to the single pass. This could have been resolved by tilting the camera slightly, but I fixed it in ZBrush quickly and then UV'd by polygroups for export back into reality capture. In reality capture, the texture is then built again onto the new UV map. In some cases, Photoshop could be used to clone any unwanted soil, or in some cases the metal pin that I was using to scan was visible, or some leaves off both the diffuse and normal map. These puffball mushrooms picked in late October and early November came out really well from a single pass with just a bit of inaccuracy inside where the texture was too dark or missing. The repair in ZBrush shows how through masking we could find the location, close the hole and a rough texture applied that matches the rest of the mushroom. It's actually quite hard from any angle to see this and it suffices for the short sequences I wanted to make. This destroying angel mushroom, it's highly poisonous and quite rare, was interesting as it was tilted to an angle when I found it on the floor, so both the underside and top side could be easily photographed. Turning it 90 degrees and scanning it may have caused some depth of field issues, so this was quite a good mushroom to scan. There was a hole in the top of the mushroom, and in actual fact I sculpted the top of this one, perhaps with a little bit too much repair, but I did like ZBrush and I need some practice in there. I found many of these mushrooms by beech trees and I couldn't find a decent log or stump, so I went into the darker parts of the forest and scanned this in bad light at ISO 800. But again, the scan turned out usable and although I used more photographs, I ended up scaling them down to reduce processing cost. I used ZBrush to remove the leaves at the bottom as it allows you to draw masks with a Wacom to remove the areas that you don't want in the scan. Something Blender also provides but photogrammetry software does not. This miniature parasol mushroom scanned pretty well due to its small stature with just a little imperfection at the top. The artifacts were removed using ZBrush and the holes filled and dynameshed. This false depth gap was also slightly tilted so scanned quite easily both on the underside and the top side with one single pass. This plum and custard mushroom, as it's known and is relatively common, which is found in late autumn, is quite hard to scan and it required two passes due to its larger cap. The first pass, the camera was tilted up slightly 
and for the second pass the camera was rotated about 20 degrees. The background was cut out on this as this one was scanned outside in its native habitat. For this mushroom I used tools in ZBrush to trim out the excess geometry in the soil and then I used DynaMesh to smooth out the surface and enable me to fill this with clay strips, smooth it and use the concrete smooth brush to give a texture on the edge of this. This was then smoothed out to match the underside of the rest of the mushroom. The rest of these artifacts were um, cut out using masking and the holes closed and dynameshed again. And for the UVing, the separate sections of the underside, the stem, and the top of the mushroom were masked off, divided into polygroups. And then these were UV'd and imported back into Agisoft Metashape, which was used to make this scan. And then it was evident that the texture underneath needed to be cloned as there was gaps missing. Again, there was probably going to be better ways of doing this mushroom, but this video is really more about fixing those scans, especially with this one where I was out on the field and I couldn't pull it out. So I had to really make do with what I could here. The scan was imported back into Blender and it was straightened and the pivot applied and scaled and then it was imported into Unreal Engine where I simply applied a normal map a normal strength in the material and the diffuse. Now that we have all our completed scans or incomplete in some cases we're ready to look at the Unreal Engine workflow. So for the landscape I used the excellent Joe Garth Brushify Environment Shaders Pack and I sculpted this using the landscape tool I added the Quixel European Hornbeam trees. And this scene is supposed to be sort of early November. It's just taken me a while to edit the video. I don't know if there's snowy mountains anywhere where you find mushrooms, so there may be some inaccuracies in this biome. The beauty of using these hornbeam trees is that you can adjust the uh, leaf colour and by using the BP Global Foliage Actor you can adjust the wind speed, wind strength, season strength, brightness etc and saturation. I have another video on this if you want to look at it. Now this wasn't this environment wasn't designed to be walked around. As you can see, I've used a plane here, which using the modeling tools inside Unreal Engine, I've subdivided. Understand that you can also use the displace tool here, and you can use the texture map which came with this autumn leaves from Quixel, and use the blue channel here with some displacement to get these leaves really popping out. So from this point it was just importing various Quixel assets that match the environment, playing around with some different forest floors and some different logs and just painting or placing the foliage and a few mushrooms. Some of these mushrooms have specular maps like this fly garrick. The materials, just very simple materials, nanite meshes and in some cases some normal maps. In terms of other Quixel assets here I couldn't find the beach log, so this is the one I scanned earlier. And the mushrooms clumped together randomly in front of cameras. A tad unrealistic, you wouldn't find this many mushrooms all growing next to each other. I've generally used 24 millimeter on the camera and a close focus distance and a small aperture to get the depth of field effect. Let's hide some of these cameras so we can see clearer here what's going on with these. And I've got a sequence here which plays through some of these. I've gone a bit crazy on the displacement here on the leaves. I didn't do that in the final result. And I used this excellent leaf pack which I thoroughly recommend. I have made some of my own leaves and I will demonstrate this in my next video but this for £2.82 provided an excellent source of material and I painted some of these on as single instances in some cases. That's about it really. Uh, if you like what you saw, subscribe, hit me up with any comments, watch the rest of my videos and thank you for watching.